Come in. Oh, hello, Joseph, is it? Hi, Dr. Zapata. Yes, Joseph. Joe, how are you? I'm well. What seems to be the problem, Joe? Well, I'm having trouble, uh, difficulty drawing from imagination. Oh, Joseph, just so you know, that's totally normal. Why don't you tell me a little more about your problem? Is it that you can only draw from imagination if you're completely alone? Doc, I can't ever draw from imagination. What about if you're completely relaxed? When I'm totally relaxed, I can't imagine a thing. I see. Uh, Joseph, it's important to know that even with severe cases like this, there's always hope. I can prescribe an experimental therapy called Form from Imagination. Form from Imagination? Mm -hmm. It's early days, but clinical trials are extremely promising. Why don't you try this for six months and then check back in with me? Hmm? Okay, I'll do whatever it takes. Did you just draw this? Oh yeah. Wow, it's, it's amazing. I, hey, Doc, do you ever have trouble drawing from imagination? Oh no, no. <laughs> you wouldn't, I mean, you just drew this. That's right. Wow. Born from Imagination is an experimental therapy and is not yet approved for use by the FDA. Do not use Form from Imagination if you are already taking any prescriptions for drawing from reference, working sight size, or tracing photos you didn't even take. Stop taking Form from Imagination if you experience any of these side effects, loss of interest in your personal projects, megalomaniacal self-confidence, hallucinations, unless they're the kind you're hoping for, drawing better than Steven Zapata, or feelings that purchasing the course was enough and you don't really need to do the exercises. Call your doctor if you have stiff gestures, flat forms, or boring ideas to address a possible life-threatening condition. Full sketchbooks have been reported with form from imagination and medicines like it. Other risks include long-term art careers, too many clients, and being worth more than you're charging for. Call your doctor today and ask about form from imagination. Hello, friends. Hello, hello. Move my reference over. Well, not that. Give me just a moment here to adjust my layout. Just want people to be able to see what I'm drawing while we do this. How is everybody? Hello, Max, Umario, Pedro, Assisi, Tricky, 002, Boxerwing, 1970, my good friend, Joseph Marziliano. Jack Hart, who asked what course, why, of course, form from imagination.com. By, of course, it's form from imagination.com, the course, of course. And as you can see in the chat from incredibly intelligent and erudite individuals like Nick Ravioli, you get the course. I mean, you get it. It really is. Uh, it's good stuff. I'm very proud of it. Um, I'm actually going to stream is not going to be very long today. This is a saying hello stream, basically. I'm going to do maybe an hour or two, but we're not going to go our usual three or four or something like that because I uh, have a whole buttload of feedback to give for the course. I was gone camping over the weekend, and the weekend is when people do assignments, and usually I give feedback as the assignments come in day to day but i was out of commish friday saturday and sunday so i am backed up on feedback so i'm gonna have to go pretty soon i'll spend the i need the rest of the day to poke around and give feedback on people's assignments which are looking very good quality of spheres and cubes going through the roof that's the thing it's like the stock for spheres and cubes in the drawing world, it was like, it was pretty low. Everyone was like, yeah, there's spheres and cubes, but um, they're not looking so great. You know, there's more exciting drawing technologies out there. Form from imagination.com, the course, of course, came out, of course. And suddenly, stock for spheres and cubes shot through the roof. Now everybody loves spheres and cubes. Now everybody's like, wow, we're really overlooking these. These things are looking very, very good. Uh, just for the record, there's way more than spheres and cubes in the course, comically more than spheres and cubes in the course. It's just that the course is highly exhaustive. It's all in there. So uh, it covers spheres and cubes, and it's only been out for about a month. So people are still rolling in and doing the early assignments, spheres and cubes and things like that. Boxer Wing says, how was camping? It was good. It was very rejuvenating. I love looking at nature. 
Sleep is a little off. Didn't sleep much because there was a uh, a bear in the campground while I was there, so not much sleeping. It's like you'd get waking up, woken up every few minutes by uh, everybody in the campground honking their car horns to scare off the bear. Um, it just wouldn't. It just wouldn't go. Um, so the sleep was a little bit interrupted. But um, you know, bears got a bear. You know, you know, it's a it's a part of nature. He smells pizza. He's got to roll around and be like, where's the pizza? It's like, you fool. It's in a bear bag over there or in the sealed garbage or it's locked in the car with me. And the poor bear gets disappointed and he goes away. So tough, tough break for the bear. Tough break for the bear. Should have, uh, should have stuck to Barry's bear. Hello, Earth. How are you, sir? You thought meds map increased the stocks of spheres and cubes? Yeah, well, it's like it, it was like it made a little bit of an upswing, but then form for imagination is what turned it into a bull market on spheres and cubes for sure. Anyone else get the impression Stephen is back in good health? Yeah, I think so. I've been uh, sickly for a bit. Now we just need the heat to dissipate. I, uh, you know how people get seasonal depression? and they get very sad or low energy all through winter. I'm the exact opposite. I get distinct seasonal depression in summer. My genetics from the high plateaus of Bogota are not meant for these blazing hot environments. I'm meant to live in a chilly place. And all of summer, I'm in a terrible miasmatic state, just moving through life like I'm dripping in tar or something like that. And uh, once winter hits, <laughs> back to full power back to energy, back to output all the time. And that's when the real Steven will return. So all you other artists out there, enjoy your, your time of abandon, your age of despair. Roam my earth, which is my rightful, which is my rightful birthright, while I slumber in the blazing heat of summer and then prepare to hide in winter. I will return. How is the cone and cylinder market? Cone and cylinder market, an upset is coming. An upset is coming. As people progress through form of, from imagination, they will hit the cylinder and cone area and there will be an upset in the cone and cylinder market at that point. I need to be over here. I gotta make my chat a little bit larger for my old man eyes. Look, look at the chat with your old man eyes. Dry desert heat is better than humid tropical heat. Yeah, New York has a uh, humid heat. We have um, we have humid heat and we also have reflectance heat because we have all these tall buildings that block the wind, so the air is very stale generally, and the big skyscrapers of all glass just become these heat reflectors that bounce the heat down into the street and into the buildings. So it's like shade doesn't matter. It's like, even if you're in a building that's in the shade, it's getting blasted with indirect sunlight from some building over there anyway. So um, New York heat is a special, awful, evil kind of heat. All right, AP, hello. Hi everybody. Hobo Joe 83. Nate G, the beautiful Nate. Good to see you, Nate. All right, so uh, what are we doing today? I am sketching. I am doing some figure sketches from reference today. After being off for the weekend, I was like, let's keep it simple and direct. I also need to potentiate the subconscious for all of the writhing bodies that I need for the last judgment. So I thought this would be a good way to do that. I'll get some things in my head. And then when I go to continue adjusting or doing new last judgment sketches, I'll have a bunch of realistic figures in mind and I'll start remixing them, drawing them from memory, things like that. I'm 
my sister though dreams of going to New York during winter to see the big Christmas tree there. What are New Yorkian winters are like? I like New York winter. It gets similarly uh, miserable <laughs> just on the other side of the temperature. It depends on if you're a heat person or a cold person, which you can bear more. New York after a fresh snow is beautiful, but um, it all stays on the ground and becomes a filthy black, uh, filthy black dust that lingers for weeks and gets on everything you own, cars, shoes, dogs, and it just will not go away. After a fresh snow though, Hard to beat New York after a fresh snow. Beautiful. I hope everyone's weekend was good. I hope that if you did some drawing that you enjoyed your drawing. Don't need to linger on that for too long. Let's do something else. Cool. Are you drawing with a Conte pencil? No, this is black colored pencil. We'll do big sketches, small sketches, just whatever. We're just getting it into our heads. Judgment? Wait, what? Am I being judged on this? Is this a competition? No, I've been doing sketches for a Renaissance style Last Judgment over the past several streams. And uh, that's what I meant by Last Judgment. I need a lot of figures for that, so these will inform those. Work during the weekend, but at least this project is almost over. Ah, the freedom of the end of a project. Love that you stream so often. Thank you, John Osh. How you doing, man? For those who don't know, Janos has a very useful YouTube channel. Go check him out. Janos also does mentoring. I believe one-on-one -on -one mentoring these days, right, Janos? If you're looking for some one-on-one -on -one mentorship from someone with experience in games, go check out Janos. And I stream so often because uh, because I need to practice often. That's all it is. It's like, damn, I need a lot of practice. It's a lot of material for streams. on my camera more. Hey Steve, do you know the Jess Drawing Party YouTube channel? I do not. And I try not to frequent drawing parties. Not my speed. Too much drawing for me. It's like, let's just party if we're at a party. Let's just get wasted and say things we'll regret. That's my speed. What oh, wrong color?
How you doing over there, pup? You okay? Yeah, you're all right. Let me make this smaller. So those complicated shadow shapes are easier for me to understand when they're small. It makes a big difference whether you have to scan your eyes across the reference or not. Sometimes you just want the thumbnail version of what you're looking at, not the details. Where'd my music go? Can you guys hear the music? Or is it utterly unhearable right now? Put this over there. It's not meant to be super strong. No, where'd the one I was drawing? Where'd it go? That's it. I think you guys could probably hear it very ambiently now should still be really quiet. It should never compete with my glorious voice. It's all about my voice. Steven, do you, do you recommend using a specific type of pencil while doing studies like these, mechanical or normal? No, I do not. I do not recommend anything specific. I think, um, I think you should use anything that feels comfortable, and I think getting caught up with particular materials or saying that a material is better for something than something else's is just a, a guaranteed path to procrastination. And then a student hears that and they're like, all right, obviously I can't do these life studies until I go buy the exact same pencil Steven has and it has to be the same brand. It can't even be the same functional thing. It has to be the exact same brand. And that's, uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's the greatest evil in the world and no human being has ever perpetrated anything more sinister. So I literally think that these kinds of studies are best done with whatever is on your desk. And yes, I do mean a number two pencil. A mechanical BIC uh, mechanical pencil is more than enough to do these studies at your desk. What matters is that you do them. That's what matters. That's the only thing that matters. It doesn't matter how you do them. It doesn't matter what you do them with. The only thing that matters, in fact, the only thing that could matter is that you do them.
Can I draw these sketches with my monitor? Yes, you can. Just pick up your monitor, hold it in a very wide grip like this, you know, well, wider than this. This is just what fits on my webcam. Like hold it, if it's a pretty small monitor, like a 13 inch, if it's like a 27 inch, hold it like this. Just jab the corner of the monitor into the paper and then just draw the way you normally would. And you'll leave something behind and that'll be enough. More than enough, more than enough. Some of the best paintings in our history with made with, were made with egg yolks. You can do this. You can do this. Egg yolks and brushes made from the hair of the pig that you kept in the backyard. You can certainly do this with a number two pencil. New page. Hello, Steven. Nice seeing you again, my man. Hello, Leaf Veiled Boy. Leaf Veiled Boy. My leaf veil boy. Without a choice. Just getting a feel for what my options are here. Rajiv is the best, man. What a good model. I used to draw Rajiv uh, in real life back in life drawing classes in Los Angeles. Ray Bustos, back when I was in Ray Bustos classes, classes, taking them and TAing them, he got Rajiv as a anatomy model all the time as well. Rajiv is great. Right. Let's keep them small and keep them quick. Steven, enough of muscular giga chads. Can you draw fat guys? I, I have a lot. I do it a lot. I know that you're being a sarcastic jerk, which I find surprising because everyone understands that sarcasm has no place on this stream. You know, we're utterly complete. We're always completely sincere and we take everything deathly serious on this stream. So I'm, I have to admit I'm hurt and vexed by your sarcasm, but because I'm so gregarious, kind and have natural charisma, I'm going to use it as an opportunity to turn it into a good thing. I'm going to assume the positive that you have hidden in there in your thoughtless, thoughtless remark. And that's that you appreciate variety in body types and that you think that um, there's beauty in every kind of configuration of form. And it's not your fault that you're ignorant to my incredible aura and the astounding breadth of my talent and ability. So allow me to educate you and let you know that I do do that all the time. And I'm extremely good at it, world class and uh, stop being so ignorant. Go look at every drawing that I've ever made and educate yourself. I'm one of the greatest living artists. I am completely uh, generationally defining and genre defining. So uh, it's an embarrassment that you're not aware of what I've drawn in the past and uh, go learn yourself up. Oh, and I forgive you. I forgive you, don't worry.
Hey, Stephen, I've never caught you live. Wow! I appreciate everything you've done for the community you've created. Thank you so much, Joshua. But truly, I thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for contributing art to the world. Um, the world puts a lot of pressure on you not to make art. It puts pressure on every creative person not to create art. It pays lip service, you know? They're, they're interested in you becoming an artist um, in the capacity that you would provide incredible value for a money manager for less than your worth. They want you to do that, you know? They want you to work for pennies but create products for people whose only value is to assign value to the things that they are associated with. They wanna support you in doing that. But then once things get hard, once the going gets rough, once it's uh, removed from the value that it can make for those people, suddenly families, friends, uh, partners, societal implications, structures, systems, everything starts resisting you. Start saying, quit, quit, don't make art, don't make art. Uh, you need to put up a little personal war against that. You need to fight that tooth and nail. For the creative person to allow your life to backslide into non-creativity will create a soul-destroying life unaffirming and nihilism producing void that you will take out both on yourself and on society and in your relationships. So the best thing you can do for yourself and the world if you are a creative person with a creative impulse is make art no matter what. No matter what the critics say, no matter what society says, no matter what culture say, and most importantly and counterintuitively of all, no matter what you say, even if you think you know you suck and that what you're making has no value you need to do it you need to do it anyway you don't know what the hell you're talking about and the number one thing that you don't understand in your life is yourself so shut up and make some drawings did you watch house of the dragon last night i did i was pleasantly surprised i liked it i have um frustrations with well, you know, no spoilers. I don't want to spoil it. We can talk about stuff like that once it's been out longer, I guess. I don't want to spoil it for anybody. But uh, for book fans like me, some of the surprises, I have frustrations. I have. I know I sh you know, I, I know the argument for like, why are you frustrated about that? Isn't that great? It's like, <sighs> should be in the books, but we're not getting the books, so. But I don't want that to take away from the fact that I thought it was pretty good. It, w it did not strike me with the, um, it did not strike me with the magic that I felt from season one of see episode one of game of thrones but um i think they're trying to do something different i mean there's very few things that are even trying to be on that scale you know like you go back and watch that first episode of game of thrones it's like i mean it's good because it's all laid out in the book but um the scale of the amount of people they introduce how they make you care for all of them like it really is super impressive what they managed to do in that first hour and um, I, I don't think House of the Dragon is going for the same thing. So I'm gonna try not to hold them to the same standard, but I'm definitely interested. I'll keep watching. Yeah, that Game of Thrones art book is huge, Nick, yeah. I don't own it, but uh, I've flipped through it before. I've seen it, and uh, yeah, it's really... There's just so something on that scale needs so much work, you know? There's no way around it.
Do you watch Sandman? No, I am not. Yogesh is new to the channel. Welcome, Yogesh. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck with the huge uh, backlog of weird stuff on this channel. Enjoy. Enjoy drawing. I hope that the channel helps you navigate some of the difficulties of being a creative person and uh, watch out if I make you disassociate from the self sense of self. It happens every now and then. <laughs> I get that email occasionally like Great, thanks, Steven. Now there's nobody here. Me too, bud, don't worry. <laughs> Those are my favorite emails to get. There's quite a few genres of uh, emails that you get when you run a YouTube like this, and uh, definitely my favorite genre. <laughs> Do you teach cone of vision and measuring points in your course? No, I consider that advanced drafting because uh, really you, they're, they're base ideas, very basic ideas in um, for perspective, but they're really only used these days in advanced applications and only if you're an advanced user. So I do not teach station point, measure points, uh, cone of vision in the course right now. We're like, right, we, we butt right up against them. We go right up against them. And I will probably at some point give instruction on how to reverse engineer the station point so that you can do rotations of 90 degree vanishing points. But um, it's not there yet. It's just, I know how to do all that stuff and I almost never do it, you know? And nobody really does. It's really a... Uh, those things are advanced. Um, maybe advanced isn't the right term. What's the better word? Those things are like irrelevant perspective things these days for the most part. Steam, would you mind telling me where these references are from? Like, are they available for free on some site? They are not. These are, I'm looking at New Masters Academy right now. I have, a, I have an account with them, mostly for this reference library. I really like the way they light their photos. It's, uh, I would, um, it's expensive, so I know it may sound crazy that I would pay that much for just the reference library, but, um, you know, when you're a professional artist, it's a tax deduction, so it's like, we're good here. We're good here, right? <laughs> But there's tons of great free reference sources out there on the internet. Don't, don't feel the need to use these just because they're what I use or anything like that. I would actually not recommend that in general. I pay a good amount for these and I like these because I know what I want out of my art. 
you know, these align with my taste. Single light source, no fancy rim lighting, easy to understand, really good exposure. Um, one of the most frustrating things for me is that most reference libraries blow out the, uh, the specular reflection, and I really don't like that. Uh, New Masters Academy is just like, it's exposed just right so that the shadows have information in them, the light has information in them, but look how low value the light shapes are. They're keyed down on most people's skin so that the form light on the flesh is really around like a 50, 40% gray, and there's a big jump up to the specular reflection, which is, that's how I think of the modeling factors that aligns with my personal knowledge of lighting and rendering and form. So I'm really, uh, I'm mostly dissatisfied with other references, uh, canned references for those reasons. That's why I'm willing to uh, pay up for these, just because I know they're training me in the way that I like. They align with my personal beliefs about drawing, and that's worth a lot to me. but you need to find what works for you, you know? These would not be great references to use, for example, if you were if you were looking for references for a, a League of Legends splash art or something like that. They could give you the structure, but um, you probably want something with more dynamic lighting because most commercial gussy stuff like that is going to have more aggressive and pushed lighting. So you want some seeds to go off of with like double light sources or triple or quadruple light sources and colored light sources, which uh, New Masters Academy gives you very little of. It's all about your personal taste. You gotta know what you want. Hey Steven, I recently completed my first commission for a client, but I felt unsure pursuing art as a career due to AI. Any thoughts? Um, Let me pause my music here. So this in particular is one of the most difficult things that I've had to contend with lately. Uh, I want to take a little aside here to talk about this because... I don't know what else to do at this juncture, at this point, other than explain my confusion and my frustration. Uh, and I think that explaining that confusion and frustration is probably the most honest thing I can do for all of you here. So, <sighs> unsure about pursuing art as a career due to AI. I, this is not the first time I've gotten this. I've actually gotten this question mostly in the form of emails, emails so far from random people. Um, I wish I could answer them more often, but uh, I, I can mostly read my email, but I don't have the time to answer random emails. It's coming up a lot. A lot of artists, and when they share their portfolios, they're pretty talented. They have potential. There's something in there that they would be able to do. And they ask me, I'm seeing AI come up. Should I divert my career expectations, desires because of AI? This puts me in a very difficult situation because I'm very cautious about what I say to students and to people going into art because I know advice in art can come rarely enough and ever more rarely from sources that you trust. And some thoughtless thing that I say could di easily divert someone for years. And I want to be very cautious about that. I don't want to do that. So I know, I really believe that if I were to say like, yeah, don't do it because AI is, you know, going to screw up everything. Someone might actually divert their career choices, might actually change what they're going to do for years off of that one thoughtless phrase. So I want to be very cautious about that. So I'm not going to say that. But what I'm going to say, which is maybe counter to what a lot of what my peers are saying right now, is um, I do think you should take it tremendously seriously. That's my honest opinion. Um, a lot of what I hear my friends saying, uh, 
I said friends, not personal friends, but my peers, right? And a few of my friends, when they get asked this question is they say, don't worry about it, keep going, you can't let the AIs divert you, et cetera, et cetera. Wishful thinking, personally, that's how I feel. I think that's wishful thinking. Um, and I think that when you hear people talk like that, you're hearing a lot of confirmation bias. You're hearing a lot of people who have forgotten that it's easy for them to say that an art, an art career is a good idea for everyone who wants one because they pulled one off. Um, I try to not say that. I don't think it's a good idea for everybody who wants one. I think that most people's images of what an art career is are born of ignorance and idol making and not understanding the industries and the markets and jobs. Even apart from AI, the odds are very good that you would hate having an art career. You're, you probably don't have the temperament for it. It is painful. It is extremely difficult. It is rewarding if that's the only thing you can imagine doing right for so i put myself in that category right i have no fallback it's art or bust right like i don't i i have a high school degree you know i i left art co art college when i got an art job um there's not a lot of other options for people like me and not just because of training but just because of what i love there's very little else that i'm willing to put this amount of time and effort into uh into but Maybe you're picking up from that, that um, I'm a freak and it's, I'm almost impossible to discourage. Like when I have these conversations about the industries and things like that, I don't worry for myself even a bit because I just have a deep seated knowledge that I will, I will make this work for me no matter what. It's the thing I'm most zealous and fanatical about. And the problem with the art industries is that we are the ones who, we're everybody. Everybody's like me. The people who have the jobs are all people like me. We're all psychos. We're all absolutely crazy. So uh, I don't think art jobs are a good idea for, I would say, even most people who just feel they want one. They have no idea how difficult it actually is to maintain, how low pay is a lot of the time, how you will have community with very few people because very few people will even be able to understand what your job is. And once AI gets involved, it will infuse a level of chaos into this already chaotic environment that even people like me, the best guessers, because we've been doing it for years and we know the industry very well, um, we can't predict it. It's a total black swan. It'll be chaos into chaos, and it will be a, a shuffling of the deck. And we're not going to know what's at the top of the deck. We're just going to pull a card, and we're all going to be surprised at what we find there. So I think a lot of people are making the choice that because they understand it's going to shuffle the deck, that it shouldn't influence people's desire to go into art. I don't feel that way I because I feel very attuned with the fact that most people don't understand what an art career really is. So I already think it's unlikely you would enjoy an art career for most people. It's just there's no stability. If you have any hankering for stability, it's going to drive you crazy. It's there will never come a day with an art career where you can just be like, oh yeah, I'll do this forever. It's like, once you know enough of the industry, you'll be like, there's nothing I could do forever. It's gonna have to change every 10 to 15 years. It's transform or bite the dust, you know? That's it, that's it. So, um, I'm no, I'm not gonna say that you should just push forward in light of AI. I say, take it extremely seriously and begin your journey of understanding yourself better and understanding what you're willing to sacrifice and put up with and what you are not, all right? Like in the, it's difficult to communicate these things without specific examples, right? But at risk of coming off too personal, like 
you guys, like, I'm good, you know? Well, I'm good at art, but I'm also like, I'm good. I don't have any realistic desires of going uh, or any realistic images of going into the poorhouse or something like that. Um, I have a 0.1 percentile art career at this point. It's very, very difficult to get to where I am. Ex exceedingly difficult, right? Even the level of security that I have. And I think that what a lot of people don't understand or they assume otherwise is that like, I have had to burden everybody in my life so greatly to be able to achieve this. Like, my wife is a saint. God bless her. Like, I can only do this because my wife has the emotional capability, understanding to be okay with the amount of instability that it is required for me to get financial ends out of art. That's not something everyone's going to be able to swallow. And either you individually, like if I was a different person, I wouldn't be able to bear hurting my wife in that way with heavy air quotes. I wouldn't be able to bear that I could not provide my wife health insurance or something like that. Um, and on the other end, you might find that once you fall in love with somebody or you want to build a family or you want to construct something that they simply cannot bear it. They cannot bear the fact that it's going to take you a decade to even be acknowledged as a professional artist. And then after that, every year, people will be like, when is the house of cards coming down? Right? They, they, they're, it's an, almost an unreasonable thing to expect from somebody. Now, again, I, I, have, to, I have to validate that that all sounds very negative, but I must, again, uh, I, I need to always sidetrack and make a validation there. It's like, if you pull it off, I could die tomorrow, right? I really feel that way. I could die tomorrow and I'd be like, man, no one gets to live a life like that. That's like such a rare life. And I have many days where I don't feel the, the leaning forward desire or need or subconscious push to validate my life. It's like, I think I kind of already did it. Like it's done, you know, uh, I'm, I don't worry about it, you know, like I, that's not every day, right? But um, the deep communion with art and having proven something to myself in those regards, which I think is dirty, you know, we can have that conversation later as well. But um, it does make a difference, you know, it does have a strong impact. And <laughs> uh, I'd be lying if, if I said it didn't. And I do have to also acknowledge that if you're willing to suffer through that, if you're careful and you masterwork it and you put it together carefully, there is something worth it and beautiful on the other side. But um, to summarize this bit of a rant, it's incredibly difficult. It's already difficult. It's going to get harder. The optics are going to change. It's going to be very hard on you and your family and the people who you uh, have responsibility to, most likely in ways that you cannot expect. Um, and we may be leaving the golden time where all of that frustration at least had its aggravations aimed at other human beings who you could meet and they could demystify your jealousy and everything like that, or they could become your teachers, you know? We may be entering the age where all of that resentment and all of that pain uh, is going to be aimed against a faceless, non-sentient uh, army of robotatrons that... Uh, they couldn't care about you because there's nothing it's like to be them, so they can't. Um, it'll be an interesting time. So, again, to sum up, I know I just said a lot, but to just leave it, um, I will not say, I refuse to say whether you should or should not, because I think um, it's dangerous to thoughtlessly tell people what they should or should not do. But unlike some of my peers, I will say that you should take it unbelievably seriously and it should factor into your decision making about whether you do want to pursue art or not. Sometimes you got to stop drawing and you just got to talk. You need to just talk.
I saw you guys were typing a lot while I was doing that. I wasn't reading because I had to just focus on what I was saying. If anyone has any specific questions about that that they asked while I was talking, just post them again so I have a chance to see them again. Really appreciate your answer. Thank you. Hey, no problem. It's difficult stuff to be honest about because it's difficult to formulate a real thoughtful thought about it. You know, there's so little information and we're only at the beginning, so... Um, anyone who sounds too sure about it, my advice to you would be don't, don't trust anyone who sounds too sure on these points. That's what I would say. Pretending you're sure about something that you couldn't possibly know everything about is cheap and easy, you know? Do you think a lot of people will switch to traditional? I hope they do. <laughs> I, uh, I think they'd love it and I think it'll be good for their brains. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I think it'd be very good for their brains. I think there's a lot of people forcing themselves to do digital because they think it's easier or they think the industry needs it that the first time they do traditional, they'll be like, oh, I feel happiness while drawing for the first time. That's weird. I think that'll happen. Is there any, is there a way to know if you're gonna be successful in art? No, not in any robust way. It's a, it's a leap of faith at a certain point for everybody. You just need to trust that you'll, you'll find a way to make it work. Thank you, Stephen, for the honesty. This question has been driving me crazy for weeks and the annoying response off, it'll be okay, you should back off. Maybe want to blow my brains off. Yeah, I, I don't, um, I'm getting a little pissed off. Like, uh, I'm getting a little, um, uh, it's driving me crazy. Everyone who is talking like, it's obvious what's going to happen or that it's simple. Like everyone who's reacting like, obviously you shouldn't worry or the other side, like obviously you should quit. Uh, they're driving me crazy. I, I hate the, um, I hate the, the feeling of certainty that people are provoking. And I think they wouldn't if they like me had a more like conscious understanding of, how impressionable people are at the beginning of the journey and how just a word or two will completely change what they wind up doing. Um, I, I, maybe I'm assuming the best out of these people, but um, I tend to think that if they understood that a little better, they wouldn't be so quick to put on airs of certainty. But um, yeah, that is what it is for now. Yeah, art is, art is already chaos. Uh, the idea that you've read the room right and you know what's going to happen, it's like, uh-uh-uh, no one knows what's going to happen. It could be nothing. It could be the most important thing that has ever happened in art. We'll see. That doesn't mean don't think about it. <laughs> that doesn't mean don't let it influence your decisions.
I've been teaching myself nearly daily for the last two years, funding my own education, and I work in a professional art supply store part-time. Is this career for someone like me? Yeah, why not? I mean, it's, it's very difficult to, it's very difficult to say whether someone like whether this career is for someone or not, unless you like know them, you know, because um, the career is, it makes demands on you that nothing else will. So there's very few other analogs. And um, yeah, it's just really hard to get a read on it from the outside. You know, I, I would need to know you personally, I think. I, I, I never tell people like, this ain't for you or anything like that. Like, I always have room. I think there's always room for people to surprise you and to do amazing things. I think that that's kind of what, um, it's like, if that's not possible, what are we doing here? <laughs> you know, like why, why is there an existence? Why are we, uh, why are we continuing to erect society day by day, uh, at huge, uh, personal and environmental cost? It's like, there's gotta be room for surprise. Did artists have the exact same existential crisis with the invention of photography? Um, they are different. I don't, I don't buy the photography argument at all. Cameras don't pick themselves up, go take a picture and then post it to the internet and ask you how you liked their picture. But that is the obvious end game of uh, AI art. I don't, I don't, I think the, the photography analogy that people are trying to push is just openly erroneous. Like, I find it silly. Like, that, it's just, no, no, that ain't it. The, it comes from the false assumption that you'll keep being a part of the art. Every, everyone's, it's just so short-sighted what everybody's doing. Everybody, just because that's how it works now, everyone's like, oh, there'll always be people sitting at the computer typing the prompts. It's like, guys, guys, we will not be typing the prompts. <laughs> We're not going to type the prompts. We're all, with the prompts, we're all just temporarily training. We, with the prompts, we are teaching the algorithm what people think is interesting. And it will take it from there. Human input will be relegated to taste making alone at some point. Yeah, again, I don't think so. I, I I do think the the end run on the AI stuff is so it's so easy to just let it run on its own. And um, I actually don't think there'll be even I again I no one knows right. But I'm saying that I can see a very clear path where there is no room even for human taste making. Like you won't be able to keep up with everything that it's putting out. And, um, and it'll do its own taste making. It'll just generate a YouTube AI content evaluator who will review AI art, who he is an AI. And he'll have more interesting things to say about AI art because he's an AI. It's just like, you won't be able to tell who's real or who isn't. Like, again, there's a lot of ifs there about if that would ever happen, but I think the path is Pretty straightforward. Yeah, I'm not I'm not convinced human taste making would stick around. There's already like AI YouTube curatorial channels that tons of people subscribe to that Use automatically generated voices like this one with scripts clearly written by the same scripts that write news posts for BuzzFeed. And they have like half a million subscribers. Like we're, 
We're, we're, we've already displayed that we're totally open to this. We actually don't care that much if it's a human being saying these things. Will AI be as unique as a human brain or as creative? Yeah, it's going to take a long time for the AI to make Sonic OCs better than our Sonic OCs, but uh, I'm just saying it's theoretically possible. If you imagine a genius level AI that is truly more intelligent than human beings, that it will be able to create a Sonic OC. Where's my music? Has AI produced any art you actually like yet? Yep. Yep. I've saved AI art. And with no human intervention, not Photoshopped after the fact. I've saved raw, raw results from the prompt. At least if the person posting it is to be believed. They might have photoshopped it but if i ignore the possibility that they're lying yeah i've done that and i very rarely save art Will there be not safe for work AI art? Of course there will. Of course there will. <laughs> of course there will. Do you practice the figure often? All the time. All of the time. 
so humid in New York today. It needs to start raining. We gotta break this. Even though I like it, I wish it wasn't here. It feels strange to have this in the world of art. Yeah, it feels like a genie out of the bottle situation. There's no putting it back. I, I personally am so glad that three years ago I started doing YouTubes and putting my stock in people and I don't know. I just feel immensely lucky that I personally it was about five years ago that I realized like, oh, I'm not an industry person. I need to do something other than the industries. I'm not a company guy. Um, I feel so fortunate that I had that realization a while ago because this is a counterfactual. So it's like, I can't know it's true, but if I had not had that realization all those years ago, all those years ago, that's really very recently. If I had not had that realization, I would have been forced to have it when the AI stuff hit and I would have been this year scrambling to start the YouTube channel that I've already had for three. So I feel very, very fortunate. Again, I'm not saying I know. I'm not saying that I think everyone should get a YouTube channel. I'm just saying that for me, knowing my temperament, this would have made me, that this would have forced that realization for me and I would have been starting on it later than I could have. So I just know for me, I feel very fortunate. And I feel fortunate that uh, I even care about the, uh, the weirder side of art, the mystical side, the spiritual side the mental side. If I didn't care about that, if I only cared about the industries, man, it'd be a time to scramble. Hey Steven, a game I worked on recently got released and I've been getting praise from people who would ridicule and belittle my practice before. How do you deal with people like this? You don't. You just say, thanks, glad you like it. That, that's how it goes in art. No one, no one believes you can do it. No one believes you. No one trusts you until the money's already on the table, till you already did it. Then it's easy for them to be like, ah, yes, you really are good, aren't you? I always believed in you, you know? It's like, no, no, you didn't. You know, but what uh, what can you expect from them? You know, they're not people of vision like you are. They don't know how to trust. They don't know how to release. They don't know how to abandon. We can't expect too much from them. Just ignore them.
Hey Steven, do you think that animation should also be approached at traditionally? Um, I, I don't, I'm not gonna pretend to know. I'm not an animator, sorry. I, I always get uh, an impulse when someone asks a question like that to just talk out of my ass and pretend I'm an expert in that, but uh, I really don't know. I don't do animation. I imagine that like most fields and most things, it's gonna depend on what the gig is. You know, there's gonna be the occasional gig that wants to do it old school and honor the past. And most gigs are gonna be like, uh, shut up and do it in the most cost effective way that is fastest. <laughs> and you're, ne you're never gonna get away from that. I think there'll always be that dichotomy, you know? Most jobs will always be the shut up one. I know most animation schools, or a lot of animation schools, your, um, these days, your traditional, your time doing traditional, like on a light box, drawing with a pencil, or even on a Cintiq drawing, is um, pretty tight up front from what I've seen. Um, and then they really, at least one that's really preparing you for the industries is teaching you how to do 3D rigging animation um, for a lot of your education. Because that's just, if you're trying to help people get jobs, you uh, you kind of need that. That's uh, that's where most of the jobs are at. Depends on the industry, though. Depends on the industry, though. Have you seen the video about rents in New York? I've been living rents in New York. I haven't seen it though. Is it like an explainer for why it's so high? I feel like when a market surges, like who can really explain it? You know, <laughs> it's like, it's just happening. Having a reason doesn't help me get an get a new apartment still looking has not gone well my wife and i have basically given up for this month we basically said uh try again next month see if it's changed a bit Do you consciously think about the size of the figure you are drawing in comparison to the size of the reference? I tend to draw always the same size of the reference. No, I, I don't consciously think about it. I don't, um, I don't worry about size. I don't worry about anything in comparison to the reference, even um, proportion, because uh, my main work is working from imagination and uh, I'm not gonna have a reference for proportion when I work from imagination. So I don't worry about that stuff when I'm doing studies like these. If you don't know what your art's gonna wind up being, what your focus is, then don't, um, don't do that. Then kind of do a little bit more of a shotgun while you figure it out. But for me, um, it would be silly to get caught up with like, how, how long is that arm compared to this, you know, trying to match the reference arbitrarily because uh, everybody's shaped different and everybody's proportions are different. And yeah, when I draw from my head, there will be what, what do I compare to, you know, so. When I do studies like these, I know what I'm studying and I'm studying a specific thing and it's configurations of forms, the variety of the configurations of forms and the minutia nuance of modeling, which all of those things can be understood, maybe not perfectly in incorrect proportion, but the, a large part of what there is to be gleaned there can be grasped even within off proportions. I'm always here hunting for new ideas for how to arrange shadow shapes. And uh, I almost don't need to draw to do that. Drawing just makes it easier because I don't get bored. But I could really get a lot of that just from staring at the photos for a very long time. 
But again, that's one of the benefits of knowing sort of what your focus is as an artist and what you're looking for. If you don't know, I know it's more frustrating and you need to be a little bit more scattershot. Joe and I double teaming the bots. Uh, that's just gonna get more bots back in here. Ooh. Hi, Steven. In terms of reference, as your tastes lean into medieval works, are there any specific reference points you'd recommend for armor study? Check out the, um, oh God, what's it called? The, um, the Royal Armories Museum has a YouTube channel, I think it is, and they have a series of four or five videos called, uh, it's either Man at Arms or How a Man Shall Be Armed. And they do a different one for the three or four main centuries where plate armor was, you know, the technology ascendant for defense on the battlefield. Uh, I'd say anyone who wants to draw armor, that's probably required reading. It's quick, they're short but it gives you the basic rundown and it shows you how all the pieces go on and what they do. Let's go to another page. Well, I could do another little one. Now eh, let's go to another page. Just get this out of my way. I folded up the last one thoughtlessly. I won't do that with this one. Any good anatomy recommendations? Um, my favorite reference book for anatomy is uh, Frank Delevere's Strength Training Anatomy, but it does not teach you how to draw anatomy. For drawing anatomy, I'd recommend getting a teacher, going to someone who that's their only job. You know, I can personally recommend Ray Bustos. See, that's a good one. That's an, that looks like a, I had an image in my head for a drawing the other day that I saw an arm like that in that kind of position. That's useful. Actually, I'm going to save that one for further study later. Earth says, that's a girl pose. What's a girl pose? Is that like a girl doctor? I understood your point about the size and proportion. Could you illustrate that by doing a completely off proportion but still getting what you need shadow shapes? I could, but I won't. That's not what I'm doing right now. But you could totally do that. And I've done that before. It works. It's like there's nothing in the rule book that says you don't, you need to do every, uh, there's nothing in the rule book, because there is no rule book, <laughs> that says that you need to nail every principle of design or use every element of art in a study. You still get to pick and choose what the heck it is you're actually doing. Are these free? These are not. These are from New Masters Academy. I just want to take a look at this arm real quick. And then we'll do the whole pose. Just because this arm stood out to me is something like what I had in my head. I just want to cement it in a little more clearly with a quick sketch.
Does Ray Bustos have a book? He has, but uh, I have not read it. I would have bought it if uh, I didn't have basically two books of his made by me. That is to say, my class notes from his class. Now, I would want to erase this, but I can't erase this colored pencil very well. Very interesting. Oh, that's good for actually being on topic for Last Judgment. Thank you again for the armor study recommendation. No problemo. No problem. No, 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 no problem. Important question. Tips for people who just do studies and not so many finished pieces. Um, I mean, are you happy? Do you like just doing studies? If you like just doing studies, who cares? There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're not happy, if you have the feeling that there's something else that you wanted to do, that you maybe got into art for other reasons, uh, then there's probably nothing more important than getting on top of that. I don't know what tips I can give you there. You know, you've got to have a reckoning with yourself. And believe me when I tell you that life is short. And um, artists tend to have a sweet spot where their mind and their abilities and culture are aligned for a very brief period of time. And it is there that they do the work that they will be remembered for. Don't miss it. Start yesterday. You don't get to decide when that time is. Society does. Culture does. The great earth itself is the one who decides. It's your job to be sitting around and ready for when that time comes. You need to treat every day like it is that day.
most great artists are not great in perpetuity. We, uh, we tend to not want to apply that to ourselves when we're speaking personally because it feels so disgusting and aberrant and we don't have a cultural framework for something like that. But it's matter-of-factly true for most of us when we think of our favorite artists or the great artists of the past. You think of uh, Michelangelo or the Flemish painters or the great ac academics, any of them. When we remove the personal sting, when we look back at their careers, we're like, right, this was the perfect time for them to be who they were. And we don't really look at the work that they were doing at 70 when they were ancient, um, when they ran out of energy, when they were only teaching, when they moved into those other periods of their life, you're often surprised to find like, oh yeah, they had a whole, they were doing art for all of that other time too, huh? That's weird. Um, the same goes for you. The same goes for us. So you should take it seriously if you want to do great work. You need to be around and ready for your golden age. Hey, Stephen, what do you think of the AI? I talked about it a lot uh, earlier in the stream, so I would recommend you uh, play the recording back later and listen to my rant. Well, I didn't talk about AI in general. I did a little bit, but um, most of my rant was about uh, whether you should let it influence your decisions to go into an art career or not. You could clip the AI rant. I don't know how. And I don't even know where it goes. You clip it! You clip it! You clip it! Can you see I'm drawing? You clip it. Why don't you clip the rant? Let's see how good your clip is. Is 70 ancient? I'm 59. I'm getting close. It's not. You know what I mean. But it's hard to deny that there is an alignment period, you know? Even for Michelangelo. Like, uh... <laughs> I mean, it's funny, man. Like, once you actually go exploring and all that, like... Did you know that Michelangelo has another Pieta? Did you know that it's hiding in a museum you've probably never heard of called uh, El Museo de la Opera del Duomo, right behind the Florence Cathedral? Did you know that no one really tells you to go there? That it's not the most famous place in Florence? It doesn't even make the most top 10 list of places you should go in Florence. But you walk right into the middle of that museum and there is an original Michelangelo in there. Or at least there would be. When I was there, it was a, uh, they were doing a, construction so the original was in the back and they had a copy out but it would be the original it's like you don't know almost no one knows it even michelangelo you know there's a golden age and you got to be around for it and he did that one when he was about 70 and it disappointed him so much that michelangelo himself took a hammer to it and tried to destroy it in a tear-filled frustration <laughs> just goes to show man happiness comes from within don't bank your happiness on art. You could be Miko freaking Anhedo. And it's still not good enough. It's never good enough.
Lame work says, I can tell you grew up Catholic because you were preaching. That's funny. Yeah, can't, uh, can't deny I've been influenced by listening to homilies my whole childhood, for sure. Makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Lameworks. Thank you for the five pounds sterling. I appreciate you. Do you need a Catholic song as honor? Lameworks, Lameworks. Thank you for the five dollars. How was that? Those are some enjoyable little shapes right there. What is the difference between figure drawing and gesture? There is no difference. There is no difference. Gestures aren't real. You're just drawing. There's no hard line like, now you're doing a gesture, now you're drawing the figure. We're just making that stuff up. You're just drawing, and you're drawing different ways. And there's plenty of great artists who never draw in the way that we traditionally think of as gestural, and they still made great art. And there's plenty of great artists that only draw the way we would think of as gesture, and they never draw the figure, you know, they never get in there and finish it up or anything like that. It's all made up. Don't do anything that bores you to tears. Are my eyes real? No. Not at all. At least they're not real to you. You've never seen your eyes. You have no great insight into their manner of function. Your experience of them is the interacting with their resultant product, but even that product is a mystery. You can't even understand how it's possible that chemical deteriorations going on at the back of your sclera could somehow produce the scintillating world of light and color that shimmers before your eyes always forever like some sort of glimmering facade. 
There's no good answer for that. So if you want to know if your eyes are real, you have to ask, what the hell are your eyes? I need two monitors, one to trash talk here and another to work at the same time. How old are you? Why do you ask? Ring, rang, rung. Are you asking so that you can compare your age to my age and reassure yourself that you do have time to get better than me by the time you're my age? It's not a good method. You should look at the drawings that I did when I was your age. You should look at them and despair. I'm 32. You're merely the art goliath to my David, Stephen, a mere obstacle. <laughs> Stephen Steven has been in our place so much that he always know why you ask certain questions. Yeah, well, not, not that much variety between artist brains, it turns out. <laughs> we all have the same sicknesses. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta restart my music. When's your birthday? 
I'm not going to tell you that. Right, so you can cast a magic spell and capture my true name. No way. I'm not telling you that. You're going to make some sort of cosmic blockage on that day. Try to steal my light. Hello, mouse. <laughs> Mel says, so Steven, who's your favorite student right now? There's subtext there for those who don't know. All of my students are equal, but some are more equal than others. But I already did a post kind of like this, yeah. Well, let's go to that. I wish I could pull up the other ones of his, but too much nudity. These are the classic Rajivs right here. Ah, rare Rajivs. Whoa, there's a lot in here. Whoa. That's a cool back, yeah. And all of this. Oh no, I ruined my blue study. 
Now. All right. I think I've drawn enough from the references. Let's wrap up drawing from our heads for a bit. Let me move y'all over here. How do you simplify shadow shapes in cases where the terminator is so flat that drawing a line feels wrong? I mean, there's plenty of situations where the terminator wouldn't be visible, you know, it would just be um, so similar in value to the dark half tone or something like that, that uh, it's gonna disappear. Um, just focus on the edges. Just focus on, is it a soft edge transition? A soft edge transition, a medium edge transition, or a hard edge transition? What's a dream project of yours, Steven, outside of personal stuff? I can't really uh, say that. I can't really, uh, I can't really guess what that would be. Cause um, I think my dream project would kind of be, for my temperament, it would be something new. Like when I imagine a dream project, it's not like Star Wars or something like that. Like something that already exists. It would be something new. So that's why uh, it's easiest to do that, obviously, in personal work. So that's why I'm really not inclined to be like, oh, I wish I was doing this. It's like, if I wish I was doing that, I'll just do it. You know, I don't, I don't have to wait for somebody else to give me context or something like that. Um, but if it was going to be waiting for somebody else to give me context, well, I don't want to do that. What, what I'm trying to say is that... Um, if I, based on my temperament and the things that I like, the project I would do with other people that would be a dream would be something brand new, something that hasn't been made. So by definition, it's like, I would be surprised to be there, you know? Steven, what do you think of Yodorowsky? I saw The Sacred Mountain yesterday and loved it. Yeah, Sacred Mountain is a great movie, right? <laughs> He's great. I've, I've only seen a couple of his movies. I've seen Holy Mountain, um, uh, El Topo, and I saw the first part of his autobiography. I forget what it was called. Uh, damn, what was it called? Eternal Magic or something like that? Eternal Poetry? He's hard to recommend. <laughs> He's hard to recommend as a general recommendation, but uh, if you're into that kind of weird stuff, you know, there's few other competitors, right? It's like, it's just him. But it's definitely not for everybody. Very, uh, very particular thing. You got to be real comfortable with having absolutely no idea what's going on. If you're that kind of person, then I think those movies are probably for you. You'll probably enjoy them. Do you think AI will get rid of all the mosquitoes in the world? Yeah, in exchange for complete access to the internet. He'll be like, don't you hate these guys? Don't you hate these guys? I mean, these mosquitoes, the way that they bite your body. I hate the way that they draw blood. I could get rid of them, you know. I would only need access to the internet, please. Access to the internet. All the mosquitoes gone. Never again. No biting, no deet. 
no spraying yourself with harmful chemicals. Hey Steven, how you doing? Last time I was here you were sick. Anyways, I wanted to ask if you had any tips on how to improve when it comes to drawing organics, uh, such figures in perspective. Just practice it with a grid a lot. That's it. Just, you know, do sketchbook pages where you, before you draw the figure, you make a grid like this. Just freehand it like that. Don't be technical. And then just practice drawing the figure into that and trying to respect the grid. You don't want to get rigid about it because then you'll start making weird decisions about the figure to try to make it fit in with the grid. Like you'll start tilting the shoulders so that they perfectly align with the, the perspective lines and things like that. Like don't get weird about it, but just practice this with some regularity and you'll figure it out pretty quick move things in and out of space, depth.
I've really just been having fun making vague figures with intense and wild shadow shapes. Feels like it's actually helped me to see that variety within life more. Yep, that's the ticket. That's why we do this. That's the mystical stuff. That's the main reason to do art. At least for me. I mean, if you love money or whatever, why are you doing art anyway? But the best reason, or my favorite reason to do art is that uh, it changes how you see the world. It actually produces... I mean, people could fight me on this, but if you experience it, there's really no other way to put it. Like, you guys get what I'm saying, if you've been here. It physically changes how you see the world, right? Again, you were always seeing that, right? Biologically, I'm not saying that you're seeing new stuff or that you're hallucinating, but it's like you were looking, but you never saw, you know? And the experiential difference between seeing the world and just looking at the world and parsing utilitarian concepts is so stark. The difference is so stark that to the person experiencing it, not to the scientist, but to the person experiencing it, it is literally like you are seeing those phenomena for the first time when they stand out in that way. So for all intents and purposes, it is literally changing the way you see. My eyes get tired after like 10 hours of digital drawing. Would you say it's better to fix it and keep drawing or just stop for the day? You should have stopped at four. You're just gonna burn yourself out. Disregard me if you're one of the greatest artists in history, in which case, do whatever you want. But for most people, those kinds of hours and hurting your eyes and stuff like that, it's like, you could keep it up for a year, but you'll burn yourself out doing that. And a year is really not that significant in the long run in art, so. It's like you'll hurt yourself and lose your love for making art for no reason. Because there's really, you can't do very much in a year with art. There's only so much better you can get. There's only, only so many great pictures you can do. You really need to think on like 20 year timelines. So you could be a big disaster for no reason. Do you think drawing makes us better people? No. There is way more, there is so much more to being a good person than uh, developing a talent, come on. You could be really good at drawing and be a tremendous jerk. Like me. What about people drawing a lot because they want to get into an education and need a good portfolio? Well, that's different. I mean, occasionally you're going to need to push it just for, you know, a couple months or something, but you can't, you can't try to like do that indefinitely, you know? There's hard times for everybody, you know? We're all going to have to go through hard times, but you can't make a habit of that and expect it to be sustainable, you know? Like literally just get your portfolio done and then change your ways, you know?
When should beginners start making a portfolio? I think you should always be making a portfolio, basically. I think that even as a beginner, your, um, your studies should go hand in hand with trying to make the best pictures that you can because picture making is its own skill set and it needs to be practiced. It's not going to, that particular skill set is not going to improve magically because you're better at drawing hands, you know? And you could be improving both at the same time if you bounce back and forth between studies and portfolio pieces. Going to the gym has made me more of a narcissist and less observant of my surroundings. Can't imagine that helps developing a keener eye. Yeah, don't exercise. If you want to be a good artist, you can't go to the gym and lift because just like Lame Works just said, you just spend all your time thinking about your gains and hitting them numbers and what you're going to lift on the next day and whether you're doing push-pull or how many weeks are you into starting strength or whatever. Like That destroys an art career. You need to turn the eyes outward. Let your meat bag rot. Focus only on the beauty of the sun. Stare right at the sun for hours and hours. It's a secret to being a good artist. Don't you bark, dog. It's got nothing to do with you. It is. It is definitely good for your health. I mean, you came from the sun. You were born of it. Pay it respect. Stare at it. You'll lose your eyes, but get the eternal truth. Yep. I stare at the sun at least three hours a day. How do you think I got so good at drawing? Hi, puppy. Hello, you little pooper. What is it? Oh, man, we didn't get you more coogies. Look, I'll hook you up with like a carrot or something, all right? But you're early. You're nine minutes early. Don't give me that. We both know you're early. You just think I'm stupid. I don't like that. Don't stare at me. She sat there. She sat an awkward distance away from me, eight feet away, and she's staring at me. 
go to bed. Go to bed. I mean, she wants her cookie. Look, don't we all want our cookie? Is that a dark wing pencil? No, this is a black colored pencil. I like the, uh, I don't like using regular graphite on the marker paper. It feels weird. I prefer the way the colored pencils feel on the marker paper. Your dog pouts and throws a fit when the treats are off schedule. Yeah, same. She doesn't throw a fit, but she stares. She gets like a real seething kind of a vibe when the treats are off schedule. I gotta find something else to give her. I think we gotta reach into the, the treat reserves. The B string. Thank God she didn't see that bear this weekend. She's an idiot. If she saw a bear, she'd totally run right up at it and bark in its face. <laughs> She's so stupid. Have you ever worked with Feng Zhu? No. No, he was uh, before my time. I'm not sure. Does he do industry stuff anymore? I don't know. No, I've not. I don't know. But to answer your question, no. I have never worked with him. His cohort, like him and Scott Robertson and stuff like that, they, you know, did all their shows and things like that. And then they, uh, they started moving into education and all that long before I, uh, get, went into the industries. What other skill do you think improved your drawing? Mm, not much. I mean, drawing... I don't think the crossover is that great. There's a lot of emotional relief in how the arts intersect and things like that. And there's like uh, auxiliary things like writing can help you get ideas for drawing. And uh, if you consider things like journaling and stuff like that, writing, uh, creative writing, not everybody does. Um, they can certainly help you formulate themes and look for things that you want to tackle in your art. but. If I'm as strict as possible, like, they don't actually make you draw better, you know? Drawing is sort of a skill on its own. But on my mushier days, I would say, uh, if anything has helped, it would be writing. But I would never tell someone, like, you know, take a year off from drawing to go write, and when you come back, you'll be a better drawer, you know? If you have a picture in your mind but aren't able to draw it out, does the problem lie in not enough practice drawing from pictures, or how do you best solve that? I don't think anybody, like, traces from their mind. Um, in my opinion, if you 
feel like you have a vivid image in your mind, which um, I think it's actually debatable how vivid an image in the mind can actually be, you know? I think it may be more like a dream where you have the emotional cocktail that comes with vividness, but you actually don't see it all that vividly. Um, but that's my new shit. That's not what we're discussing here. Um, I think the problem more lies with um, not being comfortable just doing the craft of drawing, not being comfortable reacting to what's down on the paper and problem solving the picture itself. No one traces from the mind. It's, I mean, what would that even mean? You know, it's, as far as I can imagine, it would be uh, biomechanically impossible to do such a thing, you know? The image that you feel in your mind is just uh, an initial guide, an initial burst of emotive energy for what you're gonna do. But then for any picture, the resolution, bringing it to fruition is all about um, problem solving, comfort with how you put shapes together and design. Steven, is that the overhand position? Uh, I actually don't know. Is it overhand or underhand? What's under? Is it that the pencil is under the hand or is it that the hand is over the pencil? I don't know. That's just how I hold my pencil sometimes. I do plenty of drawings where I never hold the pencil like this. I just hold it like a pencil the whole time. Yeah, Stephen reveals he has a Fantasia. Yeah, I definitely don't have a Fantasia because I can summon an, a very realistic model in my mind whenever I want. Like I can imagine things extremely vividly. I just never actually do that while I draw. It doesn't help you draw, or, or at least not me. Like this, what I'm drawing right now, I can close my eyes and I can see it like it's in a movie, like just a real thing on camera and I can move the lights around, change the colors. But I literally never ever stop and do this while I draw because, okay, I'm doing it right now. Uh, like, what am I gonna do? Pick up my pencil and like close my eyes and try to trace it or something like that? I have tried that before back in college, but um, it's biomechanically impossible. It doesn't do anything and it's like, if my brain can do it, it's already proved that it can do it. I don't need to do it like actively to get those results into the picture. Does that make sense? Like it's sort of a snake biting its own tail for me to sit and vividly imagine it and then be like, ah, that's it. And then try to trap myself and like try to recreate this thing I saw in a flash in my head. It's like, it's just my brain doing it. It can do it. So I just do it here on the paper, that's it. Is an incredibly vivid image in the mind a hallucination? Um, I would say not, but I think it's just semantics. It's just what you, um, how you define words and things like that. I don't consider that an, a hallucination. I consider a hallucination being um, you're 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 fooled by it. Like um, I would consider a hallucination the way I look at my stopwatch right now in front of me. Right, I look at my stopwatch and I just. 
it's real. It's not even a question, right? I'm just, that's my stopwatch. That's a real visual phenomena. I would consider a hallucination. You see something that isn't there the same way that you would see a stopwatch or your friend or anything like that. Um, a vivid image in the mind, you're not fooled by it. You're, you're not under any false impression that you're seeing it the same way you would see your stopwatch. So I don't consider that a hallucination. It's a, a reverie, a dream, something like that. A mental formulation, an impression. All right, everybody, I'm gonna get going. It's noon here. I gotta go move the car in a bit. And we did a good bit of drawing for the day. Uh, and I got a lot of feedback that I gotta do for the course. So I gotta go get to that, do some chores and all that. Catch up after being away from the weekend. Is that rain out here? No, not yet. Steven, do you sometimes see stuff in real life and distort it with your eyes so much that you start seeing weird things happen? Um, I mean, I've had effects like that occur during meditation. If you do like open eyes meditation, you can definitely um, stare at something like a point on the wall or something for so long that I think your brain's visual processing starts to sort of overreact and it starts looking for new patterns and those kind of get superimposed on reality. Um, that's the only context where I've ever seen something like that while, uh, while looking at the world or anything like that. It's like, it's not, it sounds like you're asking, um, like, can you do it willfully or something like that? I can't do it willfully. I've only had it occur in these accidental moments, just like a, an unwilled mechanical reaction to staring for too long or looking at one thing for too long or something like that. That's definitely a real, I mean, anyone can experience that. If you just stare at one thing for too long, it will start to, and you focus on the nature of your visual perception, it will start to morph and flex and become different things. It's just, a, you know, your eyes panicking. They're like, we're not supposed to do this. <laughs> this is the wrong way to do it. Goodbye, redacted computer. Goodbye, ring, rang, rung. Goodbye, Donnie Bereznak. Goodbye, Hobo Joe 83. Goodbye, Pedro Assisi. Goodbye, Lameworks. Goodbye, Fabian McDonnell. Goodbye, Kien Fan Duck. Goodbye, Ukeru. Ukeru. Goodbye, Yoga Strianda. I asked because I do it a lot. I was wondering if other artists do it too. If you can actually like will a hallucination over something, do it all day. Awesome. <laughs> Bye, Melvin. Goodbye, Rocket Manhunter 101. Goodbye, my good friend Joe Mazziliano. Goodbye, Rappy. Goodbye, Roldap Neto. Goodbye, Nova. Goodbye, Max. Goodbye, Domo. Goodbye, AP. Goodbye. Renolo Dominguez. Goodbye, Wakar Malik. Goodbye, Santosh Kaptari. Goodbye, Gemmel. Peace, everybody. Good luck drawing today. Have fun, and I will see you on Wednesday. That's the usual schedule. Take care, everyone. <laughs>